If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 10 of the Inter Milan career mode here on FIFA 15. I can't quite believe we're into double figures already, but we start with this episode, a game against Hellas Verona at home. We've been in fantastic form recently and we'll try and continue that today. We've got a couple of rotation players in this side. You'll see Joel Obi there in the midfield as well as uh, Nagatomo over on the left-hand side. We do have Alvarez Balanta back in the starting lineup at centre-back. Still got the little plaster symbol next to him in the team management screen, so uh, he could still re-injure himself if he gets a knock in this one but hopefully he should be okay and we'll be able to power through and uh, continue to uh, get some more players back from injury we've got another three players out injured as well so uh, Renokia, Nemanja, Vidic Vidic not Matic as I've mistakenly said in three episodes now and I can only apologise for that um, Vidic is still yet to come back from injury and uh, we're missing Renokia and Musa Sissoko as well I think the, the whole Nemanja Matic, Nemanja Vidic thing is uh, just obviously because as a Chelsea fan, I'm so used to saying Nemanja uh, Matic that uh, every single time I say the word Nemanja, my brain just on autopilot goes Matic afterwards, afterwards rather than uh, Vidic. So uh, you, you guys have been <laughs> hounding me in the comments of the past two episodes of this series, and I can only apologise for the mistake. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, to sort myself out for the next few episodes and be able to be like, look, it's Vidic, Ches. It's not Matic. Matic plays in. London at Chelsea. We're in uh, Milan here at Internazionale. It's Nemanja Vidic, a centre-back, not Nemanja Matic, a midfielder. But as you can see, Hellas Verona break through the back line there, but not the best fo uh, best quality of finishing there. They do have Luca Toni up top, though, who is, of course, a, a very good veteran goal scorer. Actually scored a lot of goals last season in Serie A in real life. So we know that they have a goal-scoring threat up top. We also have a goal-scoring threat in our side, though, but not necessarily Gary Medell. It is, though, the man that actually put the ball into the back of the net, Paolo Dybala. He scored, that's his uh, fourth or fifth goal, I think, so far this season in Serie A. And I actually didn't score it myself. I had the shot with uh, Gary Medell, and uh, the CPU just reacted for me. He just instinctively shoved his left foot up there like that. Fantastic reactions, because it came at him super quick. But he was able to react, and then I got control of him just enough to celebrate. But the ball was already in the back of the net. So uh, thank you, computer, for scoring for me. But we came close there to conceding again. Hellas Verona were very, very threatening on the attack here. It has to be said, they're an extremely good side and a difficult side to play against. And I had to have my wits about me defensively for the entirety of the game, as you can see, into the second half. And they're still having more chances here. They're going to square the ball across here. Guy just pulls off at the back post, but he should have pulled it back. But a fantastic block by Hugo Campagnari. You see the Luca Toni pull off there, but you see the deflection from the defender, enough to steer it away from the near post and away from the goalkeeper, because I'm not sure whether Handanovic would have saved that. Had it been on target at that near post, it may have been able to fly into the back of the net. But again, see the man pulling off on the edge of the box, and, well, top finish. Absolutely world-class finish from their guy on the edge of the box, rifling that across to go into the bottom corner. It's 1-1 between Hellas Verona and Internazionale, and we're hoping to try and get ourselves back in front. Hellas Verona had had a decent amount of possession and chances in this game, and had worked themselves back level but then kind of went on the defensive and uh, just tried to hold out for the points so I was hoping I was going to be able to pen them in and uh, get the chance the one clear cut chance we needed to uh, to get ourselves the uh, the winning goal and as you can see Freddy Gorin slots through Pedro I keep calling him Pedro Dybala it's not it's Paolo Dybala through there but uh, on, unfortunately on his weak foot on his right hand side not able to get the chance in goal in on goal to uh, to score us the goal we needed to win so unfortunately Christo 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 Krista Dulopoulos. Krista Dulopoulos. Krista Dolpolopolop. I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's just too long. I'm sorry. There are too many syllables. We draw against Hellas Verona. <laughs> it's Krista Dolpolopolop. Krista is. Oh my god. Chris, it's Krista Polopoulos. I think. Krista Dolpolopoulos. Krista Dolpolopoulos. Something like that. There's an. It's not. It's not like Krista Dolpolopolop. Christopoulos, there's an extra, there's an extra syllable in there. It's Christolopoulos. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to stop trying. It's embarrassing. Napoli is the next game we have to play at home, and uh, of course, as you saw from the lead table, they're first, we're third, and we can close the gap to a point 
up to them if we can get a victory in this game. Obviously, the uh, the toughest game we'll have played to date so far on you know the opposition's current form, etc. Hetemai pushing forwards here. Not the obvious choice in a left attacking midfield spot for uh, for Napoli, but. They uh, put, or he put in a good cross there for Gonzalo Higuain to try and get that into the back of the net. But unfortunately for them, his header wasn't necessarily the best. And then Mateo Kovacic plays the ball into uh, Cedric Shakiri here, gets it to uh, Brozovic. And that really was not the nicest of challenges whatsoever from their man in the midfield. Completely chopped him from behind. Whack, uh, not Joaquin, um, Jorginho, and uh, a straight red card in just the ninth minute. So the referees really kind of killed this game off. All of the fans and everybody was kind of hyping this game up as like first versus third. It's a massive game in the race for the title. And then the referee sends Jorginho off after nine minutes and it kind of, you would have thought, would kill the game. But after uh, just nine minutes, they're down to ten men. It was a straight red card challenge. No, There's no two ways about it. It was definitely a challenge worthy of a red card. A two-footed chop from behind catches him right on the ankles, Brazil, which fortunately he wasn't injured, so he's able to continue. But we uh, were going to uh, to dominate from that particular moment forward, as you might expect. And Palacio, not really too sure how he was onside there. I think it was literally on the cusp of being the wrong side of the defensive line. But the linesman gave us the benefit of the doubt. It worked because Palacio went in through on goal and scored one-on-one. -on -one. We had a player down injured in the box there. He's going to be able to get back up and continue, though, fortunately. But Dries Mertens is uh, playing the ball out wide to Gokhan Inle here. Christian Maggio tries to get it back to him, just manages to do so. Jose Callahan is there at the back post. It's a poor header, and he was actually offside as well. But we have another man down on the floor this time as we head into the second half. That's Rodrigo Palacio clutching his, uh, his knee on the floor. And uh, not the best of defensive clearances there. And then question of whether that should have been a foul. The ball's just kind of pinging about here. No real uh, clear-cut opportunity is going to present itself until Callahan has the shot that that flashes past the uh, the near post. And uh, fortunately for Handanovic, he doesn't have to uh, to make the save and it goes past that post and we stay 1-0 in front. So uh, deeper into the second half we go, trying to catch him on the counter-attack here. Chern and Shakiri slots it through to Palacio, still carrying that injury. Great strength though to shove off Britos, the defender, in behind. And regardless of having an injured leg, he's able to fire it into the back of the net to give us a 2-0 lead on the hour mark. And really, that's going to, uh, to firm up all three points and we'll be able to come away with a victory here against the side that are top of the table. But I was disappointed. I was looking forward to a really tough challenge here against Napoli and that kind of didn't present itself after they got a man sent off after just 10 minutes. Podolski almost made it 3-0 there with a nice run. Unfortunately, though, couldn't quite find that bottom corner. But a brace from Rodrigo Palacio gives us three points for the second game in a row with a 2 -0. No, not for the second game in a row because we drew the first one 1-1. One, one. But we get three points in this second game with a 2-0 victory. Unfortunately, Palacio is out for three weeks with a hyperextended knee. So we will miss his goals. But uh, hopefully Mauro Icardi and uh, Paolo Dybala can step up and score the goals that we need to, um, to you know, continue to close the gap to Napoli at the top. We'll uh, have a look at the league. Have a look. Have a look at the league table at uh, the end of this squad report. Weirdly, Sami Hananovic has gone up two ratings, but once I sorted into uh, the shape of positions rather than uh, just in uh, the way they are in the squad, it uh, kind of blanked out the plus two. So he has actually gone up plus two from eighty four to eighty six, and. Uh, if there's anyone in particular you want to have a closer look at, then feel free to pause the video at any particular point. But a lot of players are growing quite nicely so far. Obviously, we're not that far into the season. And, uh, you know, we haven't gotten that many games under our belts so far. And a few people have actually been out injured for a little bit. But a few players like uh, Ede alvarez Blanto, who even has been out injured himself, are growing quite nicely. A couple of the youngsters that aren't getting any first-team football are still growing as well. Not really too sure why. Maybe they've just been performing well in uh, in training and then a couple of the loanees that are out on uh, on loan at various different clubs around Italy and Europe aren't necessarily growing themselves either like uh, Alvaro Pereira he's I would have thought would have grown a little bit playing out on loan consistently but unfortunately for him he isn't but players like Ezequiel Sholotto are but then Ricardo Alvarez isn't so it's a weird one but all of the players that we have in our squad that are playing consistently for me like Matteo Kovacic like Brozovic like Freddy Guarin are growing Joel Obi's only played a couple of games but he's growing quite nicely as well Safir Taida is a player that should be uh, getting a first team place when he comes back from uh, his loan spell in the second season Yuto Nagatomo isn't necessarily growing too much you wouldn't expect Podolski to grow too much
too much because of his age. Uh, Musa Sissoko, I was hoping, would grow a little bit more than he actually has so far. But uh, again, a few of the youngsters are growing quite nicely. Mauro Riccardi is growing a little bit as well, which he needs to do because I'm not necessarily too sure that I enjoy playing with him yet. And unfortunately, Paolo Dybala hasn't improved at all since he's come into the club from Palermo either. And he's actually scored a few goals and been putting in some very impressive performances. So some players growing as you might expect, some players not growing as you might expect, and some players not growing because but as you might not expect, you would ex have expected them to have grown. But uh, anyway, regardless, that win against uh, Napoli has moved us up to uh, one point behind them. But we stay in third on goal difference because Juventus are going on an absolute run of love right now. Both Juventus, Roma and Milan started the season very poorly, but have put together great runs of form to get themselves up into the top five. So it's Napoli from Juventus, from Inter, from Roma, from Milan in the top five. Although Lazio could break up into uh, fourth position should they win their game in hand and go up to, uh, to fourth on 21 points and that would move Roma and Milan down to fifth and sixth respectively but we're doing okay so far this season hopefully we can improve in the upcoming episodes and continue our good run and to hopefully try and pick up wins from games like that Hellas Verona one where we were only able to get the the, uh, the point but we should be able to get through in the Europa League and confirm our uh, you know knockout round position in the next game or so I think in that particular competition because we are running away with that group but that's going to bring today's episode to a close guys thank you very much for watching drop the video a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days and I will see you next time